Hello YouTube! I am Pinstar and this is Let's School Strategy and Tactics Episode 1. So today, well, Let's School is a game that's it's it's not new. It's been out for a while. Um, there was a demo out before. I, I played the demo. I liked the demo. Um, I meant to actually cover this earlier, but I just never got got around to it. That being said, um, I've I've gotten back into it. I, I saw a panel of it on um, at PAX PAX East, uh, and it reminded me like, oh yeah, that's school. I got to cover that. I still haven't covered it. So today we shall cover it. And I've been playing it a lot offline. Uh, so I'm going to label this at least for the time being a strategy and tactics series. Um, that means we're going to be playing on high difficulty and uh, seeing if we can make it through. So, new game. We're going to go career mode. Now, there are three different places. Um, we've got Sakura Valley, Peony Springs. Oh, by the way, um, that school is obviously a school simulator, but it's based in Japan. Um, you know, a fictional slice of Japan, but it's also based on the Japanese st school system. Um, so that's the, it renders it a, a bit different than some other school simulators uh, you've seen out there, but I, I like what I see. But anyway, Peony Springs, and then lastly we got Snow Cotton Town, the only the game's only polar climate, um, with nearby plots, seven plots, one fewer. The uh, the terrain looks a little bit more daunting. Uh, and yeah, let's go for it. Um, now, the game speed here is just how quickly students progress through the grades. Um, no, this does not seem to drastically impact grades, as it were. It's just this is more of a um, how quickly, you know, how, how quickly that people go through and graduate and whatnot. So I'm going to go with normal here. I don't think any one setting is more or more difficult or easy than the others. But here, game difficulty, eh, difficult. Poor amount of starting funds, high difficult exams, the management snowed under, it's hard to satisfy people, and we only get 40% back when we sell stuff. So it's going to be tricky. The money especially is very tricky, but I think that what, that's what makes it more interesting. A long time no see. I'm the headmaster of your old school. By the time you read this, I will be retired and traveling the world. The school you loved is in a bad state. I tried my best, but my best wasn't good enough. And now it's up to you. I'm asking you to take over the headmaster position. Please do what I only dreamt of doing. I've have hidden a treasure somewhere on the school grounds. If you revive our school, that treasure is yours. All right. So first we got to make ourselves our headmaster. Um, let's go, well, I mean, of course. And then for clothing, um, well, for hair, uh, I mean, that's my hair when I let it grow too long and the cowlicks take over. Although that's, that's a bit too, I mean, that is spiky anime protagonist hair. That, my hair, I don't let my hair get that crazy. Well, where's the, I, I need some cowlick hair. That is a gigantic cow having licked the hair there. Not quite. It's not curly and poofy. All right, I'll go, you know what? I'll go with the, the, uh, the gargantu cow. Where where is the gargantu cow? Gargantu cow. That's way too neat for that. That's the gargantu cow. There we go. Brown hair. And then for outfit, I like this outfit, nice and casual. Um, I'll go with glasses. All right, on to the school. So for the school, we're going to do sort of a, a hybrid name. Uh, we'll start, uh, call it the School of Bacon. Bay meaning before anyone else. We care about our students about uh, before anyone else. And kun being the Japanese suffix for one's junior. 
uh, which our students are. So our students are before anyone else. It, else, it's a meaningful name, and it also phonetically sounds like bacon, like the food. Um, so the name amuses me. Now for our emblem, um, this person looks like they just ate some bacon. So I think we're gonna go with this this icon here. Got to get their tongue red, and I mean, this is the land uh, that that created anime. So you gotta have blue hair. Actually, we gotta have bluer, bluer. Well, not too dark blue. There, that's good. Right, that's perfect. Gotta have blue hair. Uh, and then for the emblem itself, we'll go something like that. We will make this color white. The outline here. Um, that one's gonna be red. We'll make it a make it a darker red here. And then this will be like sort of a dark silver. Now it looks like a, a ornately shaped round of bacon on a cooktop. So yeah, the school of bacon. Now, uniforms. We get to pick out the uniforms for our kids. Again, this is Japanese style school, so uniforms are the norm. Um, unfortunately, we don't get to choose colors. That's a little bit too formal for my liking. Um, you know, the jacket might make sense for the polar climate. Let's let's confirm that. See what that looks like on the girls. Oh, OK, blue and pink. Uh, I can get behind that. At least one of the two of them has has red coloration. All right. Yeah. You know what? We'll go for that. I likes it. All right, so let's uh, let's get started. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, what a lovely state the school is in. I think the only thing that isn't broken is the sign. Are you the new headmaster? I'm Miss Lin, your assistant. Feel free to ask me for help if you encounter any difficulties. I might not have a lot of experience, but I'll do my best. Um, no, we will not go through the tutorial. I will be your tutorial. By the way, um, my um, name and game patrons will be named after the various teachers that we hire. We cannot rename Miss Lynn. She's she's her name is locked in. But any other teachers or other support staff uh, that we hire can be renamed. So if you want your name in game for this series, uh, take a look at my Patreon page link in the description. But yeah, no tutorials needed. School's educational goals are to admit more students and help them achieve their aspirations. Higher their aspirations, star level, the greater the rewards. Um, you look like you have a lot of experience, so let's get straight to it. Okay, so first things first, um, and I'm going to put a cut here. Um, we're going to get the, the demolisher, and this is just, ironically, we're going to just use that to clean up all of our buildings here. All the junk, all the mess, um, everything you can think of here is going to get cleaned up so that we actually have a functional building here and can start building stuff. So I will see you guys on the flip side. If you want to build a first-class school, you can work hard in many different directions. Let's work hard in the future. I'm still demolishing stuff, but this popped up. 
So we've got four different um, uh, sort of aspiration goals here that we can go for. And yes, there is a victory condition in the game. It's a long one, but it's not one of those games that you just play forever, um, which is good. Um, I, I like having a concrete goal. So now here we can do teaching victory, which means we want higher quality students, get them into better colleges, like higher, higher tier, like the Japanese equivalent of the Ivy Leagues. Uh, students from all over is quantity over quality. We want, we, we don't necessarily need to send them to the greatest colleges, but we need to, to teach and process as many different students as we can. Um, build the most beautiful school is the wealth aspiration where, yeah, we got to get lots and lots of money and then make the school super duper fancy. Um, I guess education is a, a side priority. Uh, and then the, cre the strongest school club involves the different uh, uh, students having talents. Um, clubs are basically like, you know, sports and that and whatnot. You compete against other schools in that and uh, this is about prioritizing school pride. Sorry about that. Dogs were going a little bit nuts out. So as far as what we are going to do, I think... Well, yeah, and you can change these later on, but I think I, I'm, I'm torn between the most beautiful school and the best school. Um, aesthetics and wealth um, are really kind of my jam. Um, income related research, uh, income facilities, all that stuff. But I mean, getting better students out the door is pretty good too. You know what? I'm going to start with the most beautiful school and we'll go from there. We can always switch. All right, let's let's uh, let's finish cleaning up this place because certainly we, right now, we are not the most beautiful school. We are, we are the exact opposite of the most beautiful school. I think, oh, almost, there we go. I think that's everything. If we find any other random bits, we'll clean it up along the way. But now, now we got to go establish ourselves in a community. Um, so the community, we, we start off with just one community. They're the ones that are literally across the street from us. But this is where we get our students from. Uh, we get nine applications per week. Um, the students here only have a one star aspiration. Um, which is the lowest type. They, basically, they're try, just trying to get into a community college level thing. Nothing wrong with that. But their focus is on studying humanities and science. Uh, so those are the only two classes that we need to offer them. Uh, we get bonuses for um, completing exams, which are at the end of the week. And we get bonuses for having full marks on uh, certain students, um, basically going above and beyond what the requirements are. Also, they occasionally have the forgetful trait, which uh, hurts their memory stat, which hurts their ability to learn humanities. Thankfully, we only have one forgetful, and also we have a generous. Ooh. Well, Jason Gray, thank you very much. All right, we will admit all of you. But we still have, we still need to actually build some classrooms and facilities for them. So let's go back down to the first floor. And we'll do the, we'll do these one at a time. Uh, first things first. Yeah, I think with this one's fine. We're going to do a classroom. They have a minimum size, but you can, unlike a, like two point campus, they don't have room dimension minimums. Um, but you do still need an appreciably large classroom here. So we'll go for that and we'll put the door up front here. And I think what we're going to do, since they file in through here, it makes it more efficient rather than them come in the other way and come back down. Um, we need uh, a shabby blackboard. We'll have the teacher teaching in the front here. We need a shabby podium. So basically, the students' um, chairs have to be somewhere in the green and obviously in the room. 
Uh, now, they said that we would be getting uh, nine students per week. Uh, we, we only got four to begin with, but they'll be sending us more students as we go along. So let's plan for nine, and then we can go from there. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now, there's another thing here, facility level. Uh, as we get this um, leveled up, if we can get this up to the next level, it will give us a teaching speed bonus. The other thing is that we need to keep a look at these scoring ones. Right now, there's not enough light in this classroom for people to see, and you're going to get penalties just from this. So let's get some doors and windows. The wooden bay window. This gives us decoration plus an extra just straight up point to facility level plus uh, three visibility. So let's get a couple of these in here. Now, now we are suitable visibility. Um, if we can get aesthetics up higher, well, let's get a couple more of these. All right, and then let's just get some overall decorations up here. We can do, let's do a lemon tree up here. We need to get you up to 30, fair enough. Get a couple of posters here. 28, we just need one more twofer. I don't want to go too expensive here, so let's just go back to the lemon tree. Oh, actually, I wonder if that will be problematic. Yeah, let's put that there. All right, now we are at facility score two, teaching efficiency 110%. Um, it takes a lot more stuff to get us up to the next level, so yeah, we're not going to go for it for now. There's a lot of technologies that we can research that go into that. Now, we need a headmaster. This is basically the manager of the classroom. It doesn't, it doesn't always have to be the teacher, but in this case, you can also have them be the teacher. Um, since we ourselves are busy being the headmaster, we are the manager of the school, Miss Lynn doesn't have a management role yet, so we, she will become the manager of this class. Um, and then we can add in all of our, all of our students so far. All right, now, next things up, we need to pro program the course. And mercifully, compared to, say, Two Point Campus, we can, we can drag and drop ske the schedules as we want. And it's actually pretty easy. Um, so there's only four core courses. They, they vary up and get more, more sophisticated as you go along. But, uh, and there's other optional courses that show up along the way too. But for now, all we need to worry about is humanities and sciences. Now, factoring in the fact that some of the students from this uh, place uh, will have that forgetful trait and they will have a severe penalty in their, their uh, knowledge gain for humanities, we need more humanities courses to sort of overcome that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do four, you know, all of Monday is all humanities courses. Tuesday is all science, and, and uh, myself uh, will be teaching that one. And then back to humanities, back to science, back to humanities. And now we can see, based on this, based on our current stats, this is how, how the semester appears to go. And as you can see, we still have our one forgetful person failing. However, this is not set in stone. As you can see, our, our proficiencies are not high enough yet, but we can do something about that. Um, and we can do something about that faster than the, it takes for the semester to finish so that we can get our teaching prowess up high enough to where we don't have failing students because we don't want to fail. We don't want anyone failing here. That's, that's good, that, that's, that's no good. Plus it's bad for business. Right then, let's, yeah. This is good for now, but before we unpause, we do need to go to training. We have, at the moment, we have exactly one training slot. Um, you can only have one person training at a time. Luckily, it doesn't take too long, at least in the beginning. 
Uh, so teaching proficiency from 12 to 17, that will get her proficient and you know have the skills that she needs to teach the cat class properly. Uh, so confirming that. Luckily, unlike um, you know, the two point thing, you don't need to take them away from their duties to have them train. They just sort of passively train. Uh, so she can still be homeroom teacher. She can still teach the class, uh, but still do some training. All right, couple other things that we want to do before we unpause here. Um, at the very least, um, well, hang on. Let's see what the oh yeah, no, no teacher recruitments are in yet because we the other thing we want to get into is the research room, but we need to make sure we get the right people for that. Uh, so we're going to do women's room here because twelve is the minimum size. And yeah, we can do something like that. And then we can do like bathroom, bathroom, bathroom. And then under hygiene. Are those the same? Yeah, plus six, plus six. So we need exactly the same amount of hygiene as we need, uh, or sinks as we need toilets. And scoring details, decoration is bad, but that's all right. We're not here. We, we don't need them to poop more efficiently, <laughs> at, least, at least not yet. All right, we are done on that one. Let's just get a men's room. And yes, there's no option to do a co-ed bathroom. A little bit too traditional for that. One, two, three. There we go. Now, one other thing we want need to be keep in mind is that, and, and this goes on to the whole Japanese style of school, is that you don't hire janitors. The uh, students and faculty are expected to keep the place clean themselves without pay. Um, or more specifically, the students. Uh, but you do need to provide them, you know, supplies for this. Oh, yeah, let's finish this. Now we can go to furniture. Now what we can go to simple cleaning supplies. And we can see from here what the range is on all this. Ooh, actually, if we put it here, that actually covers the entire building. So, yeah, that works. So now students will bring a mop and broom and, and clean whenever it gets dirty. So that takes care of that. Now we have some sub goals here, new facilities um, built up here. We get that, we get some trophies and some cash. Uh, right now our school level is at the lowest, level one. We are, we are merely a tutoring program, but as we get enough trophies, we go up in school level and then unlock some other stuff. All right, yeah, this little warning here is going to continue appearing, but will go away once we finish training. And also keep in mind, that's probably because we're on hard. Um, if we were on uh, normal or easy, the, pro the exams would probably be easy enough that they'd pass even with our teachers um, um, at, at lower proficiencies. But we are playing on hard, so we must accommodate. All right, we got new stuff applications. Let's see how they look. Eww. Not really fond of that. So as far as the different stats here, this is teaching proficiency, which is useful, but only if you're using them to teach. Uh, training proficiency, on the other hand, a lot more important. These are people who um, they this this measures their ability to be trained basically if you get as you get higher and higher it costs more and more money and time to train somebody but they're higher their training proficiency the you know longer it takes before that penalty starts on setting um, even a 16 is not that good so i don't think i'm going to hire anybody in day one um, and certainly not these two so get out of here get out of here get out of here we'll get more later on uh, support staff, we have a chef, 
we can do better than that, but I'll just let them, we don't need a chef right now. We don't even have, we haven't even researched the ability to provide food yet. But yeah, one thing you gotta be real careful of here. Our parents said we aren't smart enough to study. We never believed them. Uh, bacon can help those uh, from Verdant Valley make our dreams come true. All right, here comes the kids. We are welcoming them in. Oop, there they are. Oh yeah, we get paid per day they show up to school uh, per student. So that's uh, that's nice because yeah, like I said, every every little bit of, of cash counts. All right, and the time the daily time uh, goes automatically here. Class meeting. Yeah, this is just, you know, homeroom taking taking log and whatnot. And how can discipline being bad lately? You, this is literally the first day of school. And I haven't seen anyone slacking off. There there are there are things that to keep you on your toes, there are uh, misbehaviors that you need to catch and correct uh, throughout um, you know, as you go along here. So yeah. That's it, it it keeps you on your toes. Um, so yeah, first period, there are four periods in a day, actually five, but five, the fifth period is for uh, club activities, which we don't have. First period is over. We got a little, little tiny bit of, of progress here. Like I said, her, her skills are not up to snuff yet, her teaching skills, but that's okay. I think we're off to a good start. There are many other rooms that we need to look into, uh, but that will be in our next episode. If you guys like this episode and you want to see more like it, go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and leave me a comment. Good, bad, or indifferent, your feedback's always welcome. So until next time, Spin Pinstar signing out. See ya!